Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Moms Making Money Show. I have an extra special guest today, and she brought her super, super cute assistant with her. Um, I have Madeline Lambert. She is the CEO of Content Refined. And she's going to cover a bunch of things that I just feel like are so super important as a business owner, and especially as somebody who is really trying to actually speak to their ideal client. So she's going to talk to us a little bit about marketing, but using actual data, as well as kind of how some of her travels around the world have helped impact and influence her business. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Madeline. Tell us a little bit about oh, Mr. Oh, no, I'm dying. <laughs> If, you're, if your assistant will allow, tell yeah, us yeah. a little bit about what made you decide to go into business for yourself. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. That's cool. uh, what decide or how did I decide to get into business on my own? Um, well, it uh, kind, kind of fell into my lap. So I actually have a business partner. Um, okay, okay. His name is John, and I originally like worked for him. Um, ah. Yeah. Um, and so basically what we did was, uh, when, when I worked for him, um, he had hired me to, uh, to sort of proceduralize the content creation for his uh, portfolio of his own websites. Um, and so once that was done, I, I sort of like worked myself out of, uh, out of a job and, uh, and he, then we decided to sort of launch uh, this process that we created um, as a standalone business. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you. Hey. It's okay. It's okay. Um, <laughs> so apologies. That's okay. My my uh, my little guy has completely, I call him my assistant, completely crashed an episode. <laughs> Twice. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, then we uh, decided to launch uh, our, our procedure to a lar larger audience. Um, and that's how the content refine ball got rolling. Awesome, that's so great. Um, for those of you guys catching this live here on Facebook, feel free to ask your questions, pop, some, um, pop them into the chat here if you're catching the replay, feel free to type in replay um, and also, if you're catching this over on iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify, uh, feel free to leave a review and um, send some love to Madeline. Mm -hmm. I have another question. So, so even though like, like this, this position kind of, like, quote unquote fell into your lap, what kind of obstacles did you overcome when you first kind of made that decision? I know a lot of times women tell me like, you know, it was scary and they had all these fears and self doubt. And, you know, even sometimes they had outside people influencing their decision or giving them fear. Um, but obviously you're quite successful. So how did you overcome that? And what kind of fears and obstacles did you have to face? Well, um, the first sort of big obstacle was the fact that I, I moved um, to Collingwood uh, where, where I'm currently living, um, from Toronto. Um, and I had a, a really good job in Toronto. Um, it was, uh, I worked at this really cool medical, uh, technology startup company. Um, and I, I had worked my way up to like a senior position and, um, and you know, I was, I was making good money and it was tough to, it was a big, big decision to leave that sort of comfort zone and, and, uh, <laughs> and stable job and like guaranteed income um, yeah. <laughs> to yeah to to go to a small town that basically didn't have any job opportunities um, and sort of rely on myself to to make ends meet you know so that was that was probably the biggest um, obstacle and then yeah I definitely had uh, had my my parents sort of squawking in the background um, <laughs> talking about. Uh, talking about how I should maybe focus on, on, you know, getting a, a job at one of the like resorts here, how that would be maybe more, um, more comfortable and more guaranteed. And that, that just wasn't what, uh, what I wanted to do. And so, yeah, we, we made it work and, and here we are. <laughs> that quote unquote <laughs> real job, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, people have been telling me that for years. Cause you know, I, 
all throughout university and stuff. Uh, and after after university, I waitressed for and like bartended for a long time. And I and people were like, oh, you know, when are you going to get a real job? And I can tell you service industry people, well, th that's the realest job I've ever had. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that's like, yes, yes. I've fortunately I never worked in like food service. I thought, always thought I'd be good at it, but I never actually did. Yeah. But I think now looking back, I can't imagine because like, you, know, you see how people can get, you know oh, what I mean? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Over a cheeseburger. So <laughs> totally, totally. So yeah, we, um, but yeah, I'm glad that I did it. And uh, to be honest, like when I'm looking back a lot of the, uh, a lot of the food industry and, and, you know, bar industry has, taught me a lot about entrepreneurship as well so i'm glad uh i'm glad that that worked <laughs> good good and so now tell us a little bit about how that transitioned like obviously we know how you kind of got your start but tell us now a little bit about what it is that you do. so as an entrepreneur and as a ceo over at content refined what does that mean exactly um and and then we can kind of jump into like talking about your travels and using that like marketing using data. Yes, absolutely. So sorry, can you uh, can you repeat that last <laughs> that that first thing that you said? Yeah, um, just well, maybe if I can remember, <laughs> mom brain. You guys, this is like real life mom talk, mom brain. <laughs> totally. Um, basically, just telling us kind of like um, a little bit more about your business, what you do, and what your company what your company is all about. Yeah, absolutely. So Content Refined, it is a content marketing agency. Um, and so essentially, if you have if you have like a product or a website or um, any like a website that basically needs traffic, uh, yeah, more organic traffic, um, you need to do all sorts of different stuff like SEO driven stuff. So um, whether that's content, which is what we focus on, or like link building or or whatever your SEO strategy is, you will probably need to incorporate content um, at, uh, at a certain point. Um, content, I, th I believe content is king. And um, if you have really great content, you're more likely to rank on search engines. So our mission, our goal is to find, um, is to create sort of a, a, a science around content marketing um, so that we can produce uh, you know, the, the, the best highest quality, uh, content that there is out there. Um, you know, we, a lot of our competitors, um, don't sort of use this approach. So I think that gives us a bit of a leg up. Um, and we've dedicated, you know, a lot of time and research and energy sort of creating the science around what we do. Um, and in turn, we're able to, uh, to really provide our, our clients with, uh, very high quality content and their, uh, traffic like drastically increases in a short period of time. So. Nice. nice. That's perfect. That perfect. So, so let's talk let's about talk the fun stuff. Fun stuff. Let's sure. Talk about traveling because I yeah. love to travel. And I think that most people who take that leap into entrepreneurship, they do it because they like to travel or they like the idea of being having the freedom to yeah. actually travel and, you know, take their business, you know, having a portable business, you know, that laptop lifestyle, I guess, if you yeah. will. Yeah. And just having the freedom to go do more things and see more things. And I can I can personally vouch that, you know, because I was in Cabo all last week. I went we, I spent the first two days working because we had a VIP like retreat weekend for some of my amazing clients. And then I took the rest of the week off, essentially, you know, you do the automation stuff. So your business is still. Working. I feel like I'm riding that high vibe hangover from being with those girls in person and then just having that fun you know, international travel, tropical experience, you know, because obviously travel's desires are different for everybody. Mine just happens to be warm places. But tell us how that has impacted your business. Because I know for me, it's huge. That for sure. That travel and escape is huge for me. For sure. Well, being location independent it's, it is, uh, is awesome. Um, not every business can operate that way. Um, right. But if you, if you're, sort of like running an online business and have the opportunity to uh, to be location on independent and traveling is like a passion of yours, then I, I think that's like best of both worlds, right? Um, and so that's sort of definitely a reality for, for me. I am location independent. Um, I do have uh, I do have an office that we that we rent. 
um, but uh, we're there sort of four days a week, um, but it's very flexible. People can take off, go on, go on their like vacations, but still work um, or decide to work remote for um, sort of as long as they want. Um, and so that's what I did a, a lot last year. I uh, worked out of like LA. I had a conference there. I worked out of LA for a bit. Um, I worked uh, out of Thailand actually for about a month. Um, I went to a conference. Uh, yeah, I went to a conference in Thailand. I sort of I coupled that with a trip to like Hong Kong since I'd never been there before, um, and then uh, rented a, a place in um, like the Thai Islands for about two weeks and uh, hunkered down and got some work done there. And uh, I think being able to like run your business from anywhere that has like a Wi-Fi reception. Um, is great. Uh, I also think that having an office where you can uh, bring your staff together and uh, and manage people and uh, sort of have a home base is also great. Um, yeah. So however however you want to run your business, I think uh, like as, as long as your lifestyle is kept in mind, I think um, yeah, I think it's I think it's great. Awesome. Did you find? Um... And I only totally only ask this because I find so much inspiration, you know, when I'm just sitting there having like, you know, a cup of coffee or a cock, you know, like a cocktail um, by the pool or whatever. Do you find that you're, you know, more inspired when you're just kind of sitting there and soaking up like all the beauty around you and just enjoying the time? Totally. Whereas I feel like it helps me overcome like writer's block, if you will. Right. Like sometimes you just sit down and you're like, I need to send an email. And what was I even going to talk about? But when yeah. you're just sitting there, it just flows. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And what what I like to do actually is before I go to these like beautiful places. So um, perfect example is when I was in Thailand last year, I, I was at a conference. Um, this conference was like a, a like information overload. Um, it was about how to like grow your business and stuff. So I made like a list of action items. Um, because I knew I was going to uh, like a beautiful resort um, down in the Thai, Thai islands. Um, and I just made myself a list of what I needed to get done. And so when I got there, it was like, I was able to really, really do deep, deep work. Um, and that's easy to do when you're surrounded with like so much beauty and beach time and delicious food. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of, a lot of work done. I find it uh, very inspiring for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, I feel like, and I've done this, I did this myself, but I feel like a lot of people, one, coming from like employee mentality, and then two, you know, being in business for themselves, they almost hold back on experiencing some of this travel and getting that, you know, inspiration, oh, yeah. and whatever, because they feel like, oh, I haven't earned a million dollars yet, or oh, I'm not here yet, or I'm not there yet. And not to say yeah. like, obviously don't like, get a second mortgage on your house just so you can go to Cabo for a week or anything yeah. like that. But I feel like a lot of people, they, they get into entrepreneurship from like a corporate job or whatever to have that freedom, but they never give themselves permission to have that freedom. Right. It's like that employment guilt. Um, <laughs> you know, when you, when you have a job and like you're taking a few days off, but you like really feel like you should be at the office. It's kind of like that um, for sure. Uh, and yeah, I can I can totally see how people would do that. And I think that you also have to like surround yourself with people that support your support your ideas. Um, because if you if you have sort of like an um, if people are like negative around the fact that you're like doing work in a beautiful place, um, which people will be like I've had that before. Where like um, there have been people that don't necessarily like support that or think that it's like a, a very like spoiled yeah. lifestyle, you know. Um, but like, don't let people rain on your parade like that you know like you you should if you can legitimately get work done in those kinds of environments then nothing should hold you back i kind of looked at it like it was like a work trip for me so why not you know you know because i was only going to be working the two days no matter what so why not extend it and make a vacation out of it you know i'm already traveling there why the heck not you know yeah. so that's kind of how i that's how I bundled it up and like rationalized it with myself. Um, but for yeah, sure, like the travel and it's so neat too, because then you kind of get a flair for everything that's going on, regardless of where in the world you are. There's something I feel like that's going to be inspirational there that will give you content 
to create a blog or, you know, a new program or new thoughts, new ideas, whatever. So, yeah, I feel like that's like that's such a great thing to For have sure. in your business is actually taking advantage and I don't mean like taking advantage but like taking advantage of the opportunity that you've created for yourself to have that freedom of time travel space all of those things definitely Um, and use it you know there's if if, I don't know I think that uh yeah there's no reason why you shouldn't take advantage of it and um yeah it's not uh it's not a bad thing if you can actually get work done you know like not everyone can though you know not everybody has the self self discipline to um sorry one sec, I just dropped something. Um, not everybody has a self-discipline to actually um, get work done while they're traveling. So if, if that's not something that you can do, if it's not in your personality, then like don't run a location independent business, you know, but right, if, right. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and I think travel also like you meet different people. You meet people that have different ideas than you have and oh, Somebody might be getting hungry. <laughs> um, um, yeah, you you have uh, yeah you meet people who have different ideas and and I think that there's a lot of value in that too. So agree, agree. Um, I actually met a, a restaurant owner, um, a female restaurant owner, when I was down in Cabo, and she treated us to a nice dinner, and it was amazing. It was so cool. Um, just to you know, even though her business is so different than my business and even some of the businesses that I that I help mentor it was so nice just connecting with her learning about how she got started and you know all the different things um, yeah. but I feel like so since your little guy might be getting hungry let's dive in really quick to marketing using data so I'm assuming this this means you know the research that you do for your specific market Yes, absolutely. So I think that, um, you know, you want to, I guess I'll give you an example of, um, of what we did. So basically in order to like scale your business and like keep your clients, um, like you need to sort of figure out, uh, like the key, key pieces of data that your client wants, right? So, uh, I mean, think about this for your business, but for, hey, it's okay. But for my business, like the the most, the three most important things that my clients wanted to see um, were, were, sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay, it's totally okay, it's totally okay. Most of the people who work in the show are moms. (laughs) So they get it. They get it. Oh, sweetie. So think about it for your business. So I'll let you tend to for just a second. Basically, one of the things that I like, and maybe this is something kind of like what you guys do, is I will pull my audience. I will ask them, what is it that you feel like you need or want right now? And, mm-hmm. you know, it's like it's like my business coach says. She's like, you have to meet them where, where they are. Like, you have to nobody's going to buy something that they don't want, right? Or that they don't, you know, like necessarily need. So if you're creating something like, obviously, like I, I'm just trying to think like my clients don't necessarily want to buy stationery from me. Right. Right. And that's not my, it's not my jam. Um, There are plenty of people who love buying stationery but it doesn't speak to my clients. So if I were to come out with a course on this is how you create stationary or this, you know, or a product on it, it wouldn't speak to them and I probably wouldn't make any sales. So knowing what they actually want, knowing like for me, for example, like I know that my clients are craving these in-person VIP weekends and retreats and different things. So I've kind of got some stuff planned out for 2019 that will cater to that desire and to that need to fulfill that for them. Um, is that kind of like what you guys do over there? Absolutely. So the three most important things that like my clients want to see are uh, quality content, um, increased traffic to their website, and yep. uh, like return on their investment. Yes, so, return on investment's huge. <laughs> huge, yeah. So what we did was we started like putting processes in place that would give our clients what they wanted to see so that they would essentially have no reason to leave, right? right. So. What we, what I mean by that is, uh, we started collecting client data to sort of prove our concept and prove the value of our content marketing. 
um, to our clients. So that's that's where I'm talking about like the science that we created. Mm -hmm. So what we what we wanted to have was some sort of like tangible data that would um, that would show our clients that um, like this is quality content that we're providing you with because of X, Y, and Z, um, right. and because of this increase in quality, um, this is the increase uh, like traffic to your site, and we can pull that we can pull that data, um, and because of this increased like in rankings or increase in rankings. This is the return on your investment because you're making, yay, yay. Um, because you're making um, an X amount of dollars more after using our service. So now, in order to, uh, oh, sorry. in order to make this work, we actually had to be legitimate, um, and so we did a lot of work, uh, like a lot of sort of data analysis on our on our clients' data with like off the shelf content marketing tools. Um, and so, yeah, basically if your ideal client requires data analytics, then you need to be sort of <laughs> prepared to provide that. Oh, right. So even like, even if you're a health coach, you've got to know a little bit of statistic backup for the product yeah. that you're selling. Like this product does dot, 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 whatever it is that your product promises. And, yeah. you know, like even knowing something like so even from like a marketing standpoint, knowing that women control 80 percent of like the purchasing and making those purchasing decisions for their family, for their households and all that kind of stuff, knowing right. that when you kind of reach out, you know, depending on what your audience is, like maybe your audience is men, but knowing yeah. that 80 percent of the market is, you know, the consumables are purchased by women for a household, yeah. it gives you an idea of how to shift your marketing approach. Like, all right, yeah. women are in control over here, so this is what we need to do to make that shift. So just yeah. knowing some of that basic data, some of those basic statistics gives you a leg up instead of just going into it with your blinders on, like, all right, throwing this stuff against the wall, so you, stick, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> you know what, I'm, I'm so sorry, I think to cut this one short. Yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. We will wrap up, you guys. Um, she's got a hungry little baby there, and he I'm is sorry. so cute. Bad timing. <laughs> no, no right. worries at all. No worries at all. I've I've been there with my kid. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yes. So you guys, if you guys have a need for SEO, if you guys have a need to boost your website traffic and all of that stuff, feel free to reach out to Madeline over at Content with Mom. Get a hold of her. And, um, you know, she's, she's living proof of being able to, to build a business and grow a baby and yeah. have success all at the same time. So, you know, and it's doable, it is doable. It's, it's hard work still, it's still work, it's but it's totally work. doable. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank all you right. so much for joining us and for hopping onto the show today. Um, Stacy says, great job. Allie is sending you some love. And Thanks. again, feel free to share this um, and leave some reviews. And thank Thanks. you so much. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Talk to you soon.